thank you win. Good morning. I think we have more people in the back than we do in the front. <laughs> I want to welcome each of you in the name of Jesus Christ to worship this morning. I'm Michael Dunlap, pastor of our congregation. I want to welcome those who are joining us on our, uh, our live stream or if you're worshiping with us at some point during the week, we're so glad that you are with us this morning. Uh, before we begin today, uh, Johanna is our liturgist today, and since we don't have bulletins, sorry about that, uh, we're, we, it's, uh, she's going to help us remember some things that we have going on here at the church. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you. Sorry. Woo, is that better? Sorry. Let's rewind. Okay, so today we're going to have charge conference, and that's going to occur at Woods Chapel, United Methodist Church, in Lee Summit, Missouri, from 2 to 4. Again, Woods Chapel, UMC, 2 to 4, and again, that's in Lee Summit. Uh, church conference, if those of you may or may not know, is an annual meeting that we meet with the district superintendent and we approve some business items that's going to, uh, that may need to be for the coming new year. So we're going to learn more about uh, the district superintendent, about some of the priorities that he has set for us uh, throughout this year. Okay. Uh, second, we also have a church council meeting today, and it's in, I'm sorry, not today, in person on Thursday, January 26th. And that's going to be held in Wesley Hall. Now, supper is at 5.30 p.m. There's been, there will be a donation basket to help out with the cost of the meal. Um, the meal is going to be cooked by Jeannie Jacobs. And again, supper starts at 5.30, and the meeting then will uh, begin thereafter, after, after everybody eats. And then finally, um, the food pantries sent out like a, a request or SOS saying we're, we're going to need some egg cartons. So those of you, as you're eating up these high-priced eggs, then if you would hold on to those cartons, you can bring them in. We would appreciate it. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you. So, yeah, this afternoon is Charge Conference at Woods Chapel from 2 to 4. That's in Lee Summit. And then also on Thursday is our first church council meeting of the year, and that's in person in Wesley Hall. Like Johanna said, we're going to have supper at 5.30. So there's going to be a little donation basket out there to help defray the cost of it. We're not making any money off of it. We just thought we'd have that for everybody to make it more convenient. And I know it's going to be really good. Thursday at 5.30 in Wesley Hall. This is Ministry Rec Recognition Sunday. And so we're going to celebrate and kick off our new year of leaders and uh, ask God to lead us in the midst of that. So as we begin to worship, let's go to God in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, and we thank you for, on this Sabbath, our opportunity to worship you. We pray that as we set aside uh, the, other, the rhythm of the week, that you will fill our hearts with a fulfilling sense of your presence, that you will unite us and reconcile us to you and those we love and to our neighbor. Fill us and this church with your Holy Spirit, we pray, open our eyes to your work in our lives and our minds to your wisdom and glory, that we may be the disciples in the church you call us to be. This we pray in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let's worship. This morning's call to worship, follow on the screen. We are appointed by Jesus Christ. We offer peace in the spirit of the Lord to everyone we meet. We proclaim the good news. The kingdom of God is near. Let's stand together and sing Standing on the Promises. Yeah. 
standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the having storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. God, standing on the promises I cannot fail, listen every loving to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing. seated. This morning's scripture is out of uh, our first Corinthians chapter one verses, I'm sorry, chapter one verses one through 18. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and our brother, so, so say us. Oh. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, calling to be saints, to, together with all those who in every place call the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been the, has been the strengthened, uh, <clears throat> sorry, been the strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, and that there be no di divisions among you, and that you may be united in the same mind and the same purpose, for it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are sisters, um, there are sisters. What I mean is that each, each of you say, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Christ. When Paul was crucified for you, oh, were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Christ except for Crispus and Gallius, so that no one can say that you are baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, 
I do not know whither I baptize anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ may not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We respond to the scripture today by saying together the Apostles' Creed, a statement of faith. should be on the screen. Let's unite our voices together in this testimony. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lewis and Gwyn, and Wynn, we are looking forward to our special music today. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, we have time for our children to come up and have a special story time together. So kids, come on up, and the rest of us are going to sing Jesus Loves the Little Children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every shade from dark to light, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Church today, thank you for being here. It means a lot. Okay, I wanted to read two stories in one about Jesus, um, and I really like them. There, uh, there's so many good ones, but this is one of my one of my favorites. Okay, so Jesus was tired and thirsty from a long walk. Even though Jesus is the Son of God, he was also human, just like a human being, just like one of us. So he got tired, he got hungry, he felt sad, he felt happy, he had friends, um, just like us. Well, Jesus was tired and thirsty from a long walk, and so he stopped at a well, and he asked a woman for some water. So he was thirsty, mm -hmm. and so he asked a woman for some water at a well. Mm -hmm. He told, uh, he, so water, you know, it go, comes deep from the ground. Mm -hmm. And I know some people who lived on a farm, they told me that water tastes so good out of the well. It's like 
it's so cold and it's so fresh and it's it tastes wonderful on a hot day so i can imagine that that must have tasted so good to him jesus told the lady at the well that he could give her the kind of joy that lasts forever as good as that water is jesus has something more that he would offer he told her that god sent him the woman believed this and told everyone about jesus so Jesus got water from that woman at the well there, there. But he's like, if you think this water is good, imagine what more I can give you. What do you think he means by that? Food. Food, Food? yes, but I'm thinking about maybe Jesus' love mm. um, and forgiveness. I mean, Jesus did offer that, but what he's thinking is his food for the soul. I know that's kind of deep, but Jesus, the love that we have for one another, we're going to get hungry again after we eat, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to get thirsty a little while if we don't keep drinking water. But Jesus always offers us his love, and that never ends. Mm -hmm. And that's the, what he was talking about. Okay, off to the next story. Now we're going fishing. Another good one. Jesus got into a boat with some fishermen. They had been fishing all night long without catching anything. Any of you gone fishing before? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. I caught a big fish before. Caught a big one? Yeah. Yeah, that's fun, isn't it? Yeah. It seems like you go for a long time, you don't catch anything, and then you finally catch something big, and it's really exciting. I wasn't into it, but there's a guy named Larry sitting back in there, back by the TV. He hears me. He took me fishing once, and I, I actually kind of liked it. It was fun. So the men listened to Jesus, and they caught more fish than their nets could hold. Oh, oh, Jesus told them to try again. They caught nothing, and so Jesus told them, try again, throw their nets over to the other side. And they did as Jesus told them. And they caught more fish than their nets could hold. See all the fish down in there? Mm -hmm. Colorful fish. Looks like a Finding Nemo, the clownfish. I'm not sure if they had one of those there, but still it's colorful. The fishermen were very surprised, and they decided to follow Jesus after all that. And, huh? There's Nemo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Funny. So G they saw all that Jesus told them, and they're like, but what's not on here, I don't think, is Jesus said, if you think that was a lot of fish, imagine you're not going to be fishing for fish anymore. You're going to be fishing for people. You know what he meant by that? What? You're going to be my followers, and he wanted them to go, he wanted them to stop fishing, which that was their job, and he wanted them to go with him and tell other people about Jesus, about God and Jesus. In other words, he, he, he called them to be, he wanted them to be fishers of people instead so of fishers of fish. Them. No, he told them, leave your boat, leave everything behind, and follow me. Yep. Well, you and I may not be fishermen. You and I may not be fishermen. But Jesus wants us to think about how can we follow him. Sometimes we like our toys. We like our video games. We like money. We like all of the things that we can hold of this world. But Jesus wants us to know, follow him. Because remember the lady at the well? Mm -hmm. Jesus offers us something better than water or food. Jesus offers us his love, and he wants us to share it. So this is what these two stories are about. Let's think about the ways that we can follow Jesus uh, the best we can and the best we know how. And even though we need food and water in this world, just like Jesus did, Jesus knows that we need something greater. And that's his love and his forgiveness. And it's a gift that we can share to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So let's close our eyes and bow our heads and the church is going to help us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for all of your love. It's better than all the things the world could buy. Help us to share your love with others. And fish for people. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up today and listening so well. I hope to see you back next week. Let's sing Jesus. Jesus of
loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every shade from dark to light, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. We come to the time of our worship service in which we offer our joys and our whole hearts to God. Normally, we have a tear-off form, and that's where I invite you to offer your joys and concerns and to tear them off for me. Uh, But I guess you'll have to do that through an email or uh, maybe give me a note or tear off your shopping list or something like that and give that to me this week. If you are online, if you will uh, give us, if if you feel like you're able to share your joys and concerns with us, uh, I will make sure that they get added to our prayer list. Also, we, our prayer list is getting long, and, and it doesn't matter how long it is, but I think there may be some at once in a while that could uh, benefit from an update, um, and that would help us out to keep that list more efficient. Lots is going on in our world and in our lives, some of it good, some of it stressful. Let's open our hearts to God this moment uh, because, and let him speak. Let us pray. God, we love you so much, and we are just ever grateful for your love in our lives. We're thankful for all the blessings that we lift up today and we celebrate, for relationships that are fulfilling, jobs that are vocations, responsibilities and hobbies that bring us joy. Lord, we're thankful for simple things that we often take for granted, for food or the option thereof, for shelter and warm homes, as we are reminded of those in our own community and in our own backyards who are struggling. Lord, open our eyes to the needs and give us courage to meet them. We thank you for all that we have that you call us to share. Lord, this day we also pray for those who are struggling. We pray for the, those who are hospitalized or who are uh, recovering from treatment, for those who have recently had surgery, for those whose wounds and pains are less physical but are more of the soul. Lord, where there is darkness, shine your light. Where there is hunger, fill us. Or thirst, give us your living water. Where there is pain, bring us healing. And where there is sin or brokenness, draw us closer to you and those that we love as well as our neighbor. Lord, we are mindful of the places in our world in which there is darkness and evil. For those who were affected by the shooting in California overnight, for places like Ukraine that break our hearts, Lord, for the peacemakers, we pray, who are your hands and feet in the world, grant them strength and, we, and, and shine your light upon them as they do your holy work, beating swords into plowshares. Lord, we thank you that you love us so much that you came into this world as a human being because you know what it means to hunger and thirst. You know what it means to feel lonely and pain, to be rejected by those that you love to wonder about your future and what the future holds. And Lord, we bring to you our own concerns of these needs, knowing that you hear them and that you love us and that you've been through them before. Lord, you love us so much that you went to the cross to suffer and die. And after you passed away and you were taken out down off of the cross and put into the tomb, And on the third day, you rose to be with God to give him glory and to assure us that in death there is life and that in darkness there is hope and that in endings there are beginnings and that in weakness there is strength. And so, Lord, in this moment, we offer to you our own prayers of joy and concern. In this time of silence, we open our hearts and we're bold enough that you will once more come into our lives once more come into this church with your Holy Spirit. Once more come into our homes, our workplaces, our neighborhoods, and the world with a renewing, reviving, hope-filled sense of your presence. Hear our prayers.
God, because we are thankful that your time is not our own. We pray that in your time you will make all things beautiful. That is our hope and our trust. As we pray together the prayer that you taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We offer to God our time, our, our lives, our, our wholeness, all that we are, our finances. Uh, when we put God first, everything else seems to order itself in a loving, wonderful way. I want to thank all of you for what you do in the name of Christ throughout the week. Uh, whether it's uh, gifts of tithes and offerings, which first and foremost make our ministry possible here in this campus. I'm also thankful for those which today we're going to be celebrating. We serve in leadership roles, many which are behind the scenes, but uh, do the work of Christ uh, uh, throughout the week. And also those that, you know, we all have our things. We all have our special gifts. We all have the things that God has appointed us to do, and you're doing them. And for that, I'm grateful. Uh, so at this time, we offer ourselves uh, to God through our gifts of tithes and offerings. As United Methodists, we give ourselves through five main ways. Prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. As the ushers come forward and we pass the plates around, I encourage you to consider or ask yourself or re-ask yourself how God is calling you to serve in the world. Let us give.
together and sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia. Christ, whose power uplifts, praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Giving God, we are so thankful for all the many blessings you give to us, those that we are aware of, and those that in your time will be made beautiful and revealed. Please use these gifts and the gifts of our whole lives, our service, our witness in the world, that the world may one day and one day soon reflect your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior and guide. Amen. Please be seated. I read today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. For those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left with their boat and their, fa their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, most of you know by now that I live in a large apartment building downtown. Uh, Commerce Building is a 30-story uh, building located at 9th and Main. And it used to be the headquarters for Commerce Bank back in the day until they uh, built a, a new building just to the south. I love where I live in. I, I find it a, a nice and, and quiet place to live, well, most of the time. Uh, recently, late one night, I had just turned off the lights. I had gotten into bed, covered up, rolled over, closed my eyes, started my prayer, when I heard the most atrocious and abrasive sound one can imagine coming from a speaker located above my bed. Do you, do you remember uh, the recorders that we played in third and fourth grade or so? Terrible, a loud flute tone, followed by a male voice that repeats, May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? An emergency has been reported in the building. Please stand by for further information. That repeats over and over again with that flute sound. This message, uh, you know, with that flute sound repeats, you know, a good 10 or 15 minutes until the fire department arrives and investigates someone's popcorn event and turns off the alarm. Like I said, it's usually somebody that burns their popcorn. We have a feed on Facebook, and instantly when that tone goes off, you know, lots of chatter is going on. In the case of last week's alarm, someone left plastic on the burner, and it started a fire. 
What's so bad about the alarms at Commerce Tower is they're so startling, and they come at the most inconvenient of moments, like maybe when you're on a Zoom call, or when you've closed your eyes and go to sleep. And, and what's worse, it tells us to stand by for further information, which never comes. We've been told that the reason for this in the high-rise building is that the alarm does not cause a mass exodus leading to chaos or disorder in the stairwells. Sure enough, the plastic that caught fire on the 15th floor uh, led to the evacuation of the 15th and 16th, and the rest of us stood by for further information, and we still are. Apparently, the, the alarm can vary by the floor, so the evacuation is more controlled. But still, it, it's a bit uncomfortable uh, being told there's an emergency and not knowing how to respond. Whatever is happening right now, I'd sure be glad to know. Well, hopefully your, your fire alarm doesn't startle you as frequently as mine does in a, the apartment building, but surely you've got something that startles you from time to time like an alarm that screams it's time to wake up, or a phone that rings because someone is calling you, or, my, or a microwave that says your popcorn is done right now, don't delay. <laughs> All these things and more say right now, this minute, it's time. Well, in our scripture lesson on this Ministry Recon Recognition Sunday is a discipleship alarm calling us, inviting us to listen and respond to Jesus who invites us into a life of discipleship. So we're told that Jesus left his hometown in Nazareth in Capernaum, which was a fishing town on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. It was in the territory of Zebulun and Nephthali, and this is not just a trivia for us. Matthew wants us to know, and he quotes the book of Isaiah to show us that Jesus is the fulfillment of prophecy. What's more uh, is, uh, is that in New Testament times, this new area uh, was under uh, new management uh, by the Romans, and, and so the Jews were hoping for a Messiah who would bring light in the darkness. That same area had been conquered by the Assyrians here, uh, many centuries before, but now it was under control by the Romans, and so the Jesus' uh, Christians who heard these words uh, by Matthew after they were written about 80 A.D. would have seen Jesus bringing light to a world of Roman rule and domination. Jesus uh, taught them to repent that the kingdom of God has come near. Repent has a, is, a, is a Greek word metanoia, which means to stop, turn, and walk the other direction. And so in verse 18, Jesus walked along the shore of the Sea of Galilee where he saw Simon Peter and his brother Andrew casting nets into the sea as they were fishermen. You may remember the last few weeks on, in the season of Epiphany, we've talked about Jesus calling uh, his first disciples and all the, the accounts are different. The gist is the same. Jesus called them to let go of their present life, telling them, inviting them, calling them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. No doubt Jesus' words struck a chord with these men who served in their lives as commercial fishermen. Uh, one of my former professors, uh, Warren Carter, he was professor at St. Paul School of Theology for a while. He, uh, gave, he, he said this, uh, it, it goes deeper than this, that, that they were called to let go of some things. It, it, it was a uh, socio-political statement. Fishing was embedded in the local economy in, Roman, in the Roman world. Rome had total uh, control over everything, and they taxed most of what these men would have brought in from their fishing business. Yet Jesus disrupts their lives. He calls them to a different loyalty, not to Rome, but to a new way, a whole new way of life, a new way of living, and a new vision, serving not their families or their interests or Rome, but God. This was a radical call on their lives, to leave aside their way of life, their old culture, what they knew and what they loved day in and day out. Yet Jesus was calling it to leave it all behind for the sake of God's kingdom. Matthew says in verse 20, immediately, right now, don't pass go or collect 200. Immediately, they left and followed Jesus right now. 
don't stand by for more information. He called them right now. In verse 20, Jesus then saw the Zebedee and Sons fishing company where, where brothers James and John were mending their nets. I don't know anything about mending fish nets, but it must have been a stinky and laborious task to fix the tears and junk that had gotten in these nets and maintain them. But it makes me wonder, perhaps did Jesus see their diligence and see their ability and willingness to get their hands dirty and think these are the perfect people to be disciples? Immediately, right now, they left their boat and their dad and they followed Jesus. Now, this doesn't mean they'll never see their loved ones again. It doesn't mean they never fished again. But we see that Peter, Andrew, James, and John did answer immediately, right now, the call to, answer, to, to follow Jesus, a new way of living, a new way of being, a new community, and a new vision in which he offered. And they went throughout Galilee, teaching in synagogues and proclaiming good news of the kingdom. Matthew tells us they cured every disease and every sickness among the people. Amazing, wonderful, powerful, healing work happens when we answer the call to follow Jesus. Jesus called Peter, Andrew, James, and John to decide right then, right now, what must we let go in order to follow him? For them it was careers or relationships that they held dear in this world. And like the call that Jesus gave to each one of them, we do well to ask ourselves what should we leave behind right now in order to follow Jesus more faithfully. For some of us it may be tangible things. Uh, people have left their former careers. I, I know some of them who've gone into ministry, left very high paying or uh, careers that they loved and uh, to go into ministry or missionary roles. Some in our congregation have gone on mission trips, long term and short term, leaving behind funds or vacation or the comfort of life here in this part of the world to do something to serve God. All of us are called day by day to let go of the things that get in the way of our walk with God. For example, budgeting, so in order to tithe, or budgeting our time so as to be uh, more in worship and devotion and prioritize that. Recently, I've been praying more often this prayer when I feel like I'm swamped or, or out of whack. God, order and reorder my day so that I may serve you and do what you want me to. And many times God does it whether I want to or not. Just because the disciples in our passage and many in our day, though, give up personal material things, this may not be your sacrifice. We can still, I believe we can still have things, and we can still have relationships, careers and families, hobbies we love, and we can still serve God first. I call it the Jesus glasses. When we view all of our de decisions, all of our work, all of our priorities and ambitions through the lens of our faith in Jesus and through our discipleship, it is a wonderful ordering and a reordering of our lives. When we put God first, when we view God through the lens of everything else that we're doing, uh, the things of the world grow strangely dim in light of God's glory and grace. What if we could use what we have to God's glory? You know, and I think there are many things that we can, that we do have that we can use to God's glory. And it may be a blessing that we can share these things with others. I do believe sometimes, many times, God gives us what we have as a gift to share with others around us and to make a difference. Not everyone in the Bible sold their things and left everything. Some did, but many continued to live their lives, but they reprioritized their lives so that they could serve God first among all things. What must we do to set aside what we need to in order to serve Jesus more effectively? The Bible says we cannot serve two masters, and so if it gets in the way, let those nets go. Finally, in the spirit of leaving behind, I think there, there may be many of us who may need to let go of some deeper things. Things like guilts or hang-ups or things in here 
that keep you from becoming the person that God is calling you to. You see, these are the things that are a joy to leave behind. Because when we find that we are truly loved by Jesus and have our identity in him alone, and, and not in what other people think about us or say about us, man, is that liberating. When Christ is our Savior and we serve only him, uh, it's truly a freeing and fulfilling thing when, you know, we don't let our things get up, ourselves get so upset up anymore. Uh, we don't weigh ourselves against our neighbor and compare ourselves against one another, leading to all sorts of, of negative feelings. Uh, there are some things that we do need to reorganize and prioritize. Life is too short to be in a situation or in relationships that pull you down or are negative or, or in situations in which you, you don't want to do or are not making you a better person or a better disciple. I've often said many times that often at the end of the day we cannot change anyone else or any other thing, but one thing we can change is ourselves. And, and, and also on a broader level is um, many times churches, uh, local churches need to let go of some things too. Uh, things like uh, maybe old traditions or uh, old uh, customs or things that maybe just don't serve us or serve the kingdom of God any longer. I think there's a message in here for us as a church or as a United Methodist Church as we move into this new year as leaders. I found that in a strong relationship with Jesus Christ will help us prioritize the things in our lives so that they don't carry the weight that they did before. They don't grip us as they had previously. And it will help free yourself from all the things that you do need to let go of, that you need to drop and leave behind. The question for us today, like Peter, Andrew, James, and John, is what must we let go of? What must we leave behind to repent, to use that word that's often misused, but what must we let stop, let go of, and walk away from in order to be a better disciple, a better Christian, a better church, and make the world much better? I believe the task before us today is to let go of the things that serve us or serve somebody else and instead pick up the things that serve God and our neighbor. When we do this, we see a wonderful reprioritizing of our lives and everything is all made all the better. So may that be our call today and especially for us as leaders as we go forth into this new year as serving the church. Let all things we do be through the lens of Jesus. And may we, pre may we prioritize and reprioritize our lives unto him. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. 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 No turning back, no turning back. Please be seated. You didn't need to stand, but that was nice. So today is Ministry Recognition Sunday. Uh, thanks to Elizabeth, our, Elizabeth Bowman, our outgoing lay leader, she thought of this idea. So this is uh, to her credit. Uh, we thought it would be a great way to celebrate and uh, those uh, leaders who are leaving positions in the church, of, of, who, are, who are leaving leadership positions in the church just by nature of routine the, the new year. 
but also to recognize those who are stepping into roles and to give all of them thanks and gratitude. And so uh, we will start. Good morning. The Avondale United Methodist Church Nominations and Leadership Development Team, and that's a big mouthful because we always refer to it as the Nominations Committee, but it really is the Nominations and Leadership Development Team works hard every fall to make sure that every leadership position is filled. We typically ask people to serve on a team for three years. Our book of discipline requires us to submit a list of those people serving on the Board of Trustees, the Staff Parish Relations Committee, and Finance. So I'd like to begin our celebration by acknowledging members of the nominations team. The Book of Discipline requires the pastor to chair this committee. I tried to get out of that once, but the bishop told me I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> he made me put that in there for sure. Please stand if you served on this team in 2022. Elizabeth Bowman, Jeannie Jacobs, Linda Klemp, Fern Lambert, Ruth Lanningham, Nancy Mel, Betty Montag, and Christy Schmitz served along with Pastor Michael. So help me thank these faithful servants. Nominations team, thank you. Again, these are the folks that help nominate each one of you uh, to serve on teams and committees. So now you know who to thank. <laughs> each year, we can expect several of our leaders to move into various leadership roles and other changes to occur. It's all routine, and you'll notice that there are new faces uh, and new roles this year. So Elizabeth Bowman, I'd like uh, these to come forward. Elizabeth Bowman, uh, David Garrett, uh, way back in the back, and then Dave Jacobs. If you guys would come up, please. Stand up front. As the guys come up, Elizabeth has served for 10 years as our lay leader. The lay leader works closely with the pastor to recruit, train, and encourage the leadership in the church, lay leadership as opposed to clergy. Uh, Dave Jacobs has served many years as our church council chair, and so we thank Dave for serving our church council, especially during the challenge of COVID. Uh, that, was, uh, uh, that was wonderful. And so, Dave, we thank you for your leadership there. And also, Dave Garrett uh, has served on the Board of Trustees for a number of years, including the last few as chair of the board. The trustees are responsible for the care and upkeep of the property. Uh, Dave has been instrumental in caring for our grounds and also for many years alongside his dad, Bob. Bob Garrett's here, back in the back. He did that for many years. And so at, at this time, uh, oh, also this time, I'd like Gwen Roberts to come up and Vicki Graff and Bonnie House to come up, please. I'd like to introduce you. These are the folks who are stepping into these new roles. Gwen Roberts is going to serve as our new lay leader. And Elizabeth is going to become the church council chair. And Vicki is bravely stepped into the board of trustees. <laughs> that was not in the script. And, and Bonnie House has graciously accepted the position of chair of the finance team. And so we want to recognize the many years of service to that Gary Westcott, who passed away uh, years, uh, a few months ago, he served as the chair of finance. Gary passed away a few months ago, but his legacy and his, um, and his direction and leadership continues and will for many years. Um, and so we're grateful for his legacy. Thank you. So you all may be seated. Let's give them a round of applause. Sorry. So it's been my privilege and honor to serve as your lay leader and in my new role as church council chair, I'd like to introduce it now, the key leaders and volunteers who serve on the committees that are required by, who wrote this long script? Uh, by, by our district. So all of the members will be voted on this afternoon at our charge conference in Lee Summit. 
Please come forward and join the chair of your committee with the finance team gathering by the piano, please. And um, let's see, we'll have this um, SBRC team in the middle and the board of trustees over here on the, on the right. Okay, well, so we should have staff parish. Who do we have by the piano now? We have finance over here, and we have SBRC in the middle. <laughs> and we have the board of trustees on the far, on you guys' far right. Okay, so we're going to begin with the staff parish relations committee here in the middle. This team is the human resources department of our church. They are responsible for hiring and training staff and setting salaries. Please give a little wave as I read your name so the congregation will know who you are. Kathy Irvin serves as chair. Our members include Linda Klimp, Susan Dowden, Judy Frame, who was unable to attend today, Judy Jensen, Nancy Mel, who is also out of town, Larry Schmitz, and Elizabeth Bowman. Thank you. And let's see, our finance team over by the piano, they strive to be good stewards of our donations and tithes. The finance team works together to uh, set a yearly budget and also works to maintain our investments. Uh, again, if you give uh, a little wave, as your name is called, Bonnie House is going to be the chair of the finance team and serving along with her is our treasurer, Mike Bowman. Mike also, I should say, is volunteer and does so much good work for us behind the scenes, and so thank you very much, Mike. And also other members are Dave Jacobs, Elizabeth Bowman, Kathy Irvin, Vicki Graff, Jeannie Jacobs, Gwen Roberts, Debbie West, Tommy Taylor, Judy Cronister, Judy Jensen, Catherine Zabel, and Ruth Lanningham. Did everybody get called? Okay. So you've noticed that many of these volunteers, they may serve on other teams. The finance team has a, sort of a conglomerate of other representatives from other teams that serve on it, and that way it's a more well-rounded uh, committee uh, as we're talking about our finances from all areas of the, of the church. And so as examples, like finance committee includes the lay leader, SPRC chair, church council chair, and as well as, as me, I serve on these, these three committees as well. The third key committee is the board of trustees. And like we shared earlier, the board of trustees is responsible for the care and upkeep of our property. Vicki Graff will serve as the new chair. Other members of the board include Jim Cronister, Russ Weiss, Bill Conaway, Kevin Flynn, Christy Schmitz, Jason Wimberly, Dave Jacobs, and Mike Slavic. So uh, we just want each, each, each and every person to feel comfortable approaching all of these individuals in their respective areas uh, with suggestions that you, may, that you may wish to share. We appreciate your guidance and your leadership as well. Uh, in the interest of time, we're not going to bring anyone else forward, but we do have a significant number of people that offer their time and service in various capacities. And so um, when Elizabeth and I read the name of their team, please stand so we can thank you. Let's give all of these teams and committees a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Boy, am I grateful. Okay. So I, d I do wish that we could read every name of everybody that's about to stand, but um, in the interest of time, we're not going to do that because some of us have a meeting later this afternoon. So, um, but I would say if you're sitting down front in the first five, six, or seven rows, that we might encourage you to turn around because a lot of people are seated behind you and we would like you to be able to see who's who as we do this. So we're going to start with the education team. So if you're a member of the education team, would you please stand? This team, you know what? I'm going to ask you to hold your applause because we'll be clapping all morning. We'll give a big clap again at the end. Um, this team 
is um, responsible for Sunday school and small groups, um, programming for all ages in our church, really. This team would welcome any new members. We're kind of small. John Frank serves as chair. So thank you for your leadership and time. Okay, we'd like you to stand if you're a member of the newly combined missions and outreach team. Uh, those of you who serve on our missions and outreach, this team leads our church in mission opportunities that connect us with our community and our world. Reverend Christy Schmitz and Larry Schmitz will serve as co-chairs, and so they'll be meeting soon to brainstorm and vision for 2023. This is our missions and outreach team. We'll clap for you in a bit. You may be seated. Now, please stand if you're a member of the worship team. And people may be kind of staggering as you stand for this because these people do a lot of things behind the scene. So we have um, acolytes that should be standing. We have ushers that um, serve periodically. We have liturgists that serve. Um, those of you that prepare communion, those of you that schedule the acolytes and schedule the um, ushers. These pyramids used to be white, and now they're green. Somebody had to do that. We don't have a fairy that comes around. When the banners change, somebody on the worship team has to do that. So there are so many things behind the scenes that we really thank you for your very valuable service. Okay, you may be seated. Okay, we'd like you to stand if you're a member of the Reconciling Ministries team. The Reconciling Ministries team is made up of our very inclusively minded members who work to create a welcoming church and especially care for the concerns of our LGBTQIA community. Bonnie House chairs this team. They also provide some educational and service events to help us and educate and re-educate in this area. We thank you for your work that makes us a more inclusive and safe space for everyone. Thank you. You may be seated. Please stand if you're a member of the Radical Hospitality Team. Judy Everly serves as chair. And as you look around, we're thanking them for the many improvements they have made that in, have enhanced our narthex, our sanctuary, and our parking lot. Thank you. You may be seated. Now the stewardship team. It's co-chaired by De Jeannie, and Je Jeannie and Dave Jacobs. They'd like to invite interested members to join them as they pursue projects in 2023. You'll find Dave and Jeannie working tirelessly, planning dinners and other events to keep us engaged with each other and our community. Thank you, Dave and Jeannie. Please be seated. Jeannie's way in the back. She waved from the Northex. Where is Jeannie? She's way back there in the Northex, oh, okay. waving. Yeah. Please, we always have someone back there during the church service. Please, that's another behind the scenes job. Please stand if you are part of the JOB loan program team. This team is chaired by Tommy Taylor. The scholarship fund was started over 40 years ago by Elmer and Alice Black to provide scholarships for those interested in trade school professions. Several years ago, we transferred that fund to the North Kansas City School District Foundation, which now invests the funds and provides the candidates um, that are worthy of our scholarship, which I think, Tommy, you said two to $3,000 each. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it, it's a very impressive fund, and we're doing a good thing at the high school. You may be seated. Thank you. We'd like you to, to stand if you serve on the endowment fund team. The endowment fund is chaired by Vicki Graff. Uh, this team manages our endowment fund, which is invested with the Missouri United Methodist Foundation. The endowment fund is a legacy from former members and um, has been a blessing and enabled us to continue to exist much of the time. Thank you for your management on this. Please stand now if you are a member of the memorial team, which is chaired by Ruth Lanningham. The memorial team is responsible for managing funds that have been donated in memory of loved ones who have passed away. Thank you, you may be seated. The history and archives team, Fern Lambert is the chair. Is Fern here? We're proud of our history and having been founded in 1914 as a, and as a long-term member, Fern is an expert on our history. Please stand if you are part of the church library team, which is co-chaired by Bonnie House and Nancy Mel. Nancy's not here. But we have an extensive library upstairs, and please check out the featured books and recommendations that you find on the bookshelves in the Narthex. We'd like you to stand if you serve on the secondhand ministries team in the thrift store. 
Uh, the, chair is, uh, an, the chair is Anita Gorman, and the coordinator of volunteers is Margaret Smith. This team manages the Little House Thrift Store, and they work really hard to make connections with our community. The proceeds from their sales benefit our church, and we thank you for all those who volunteer and serve in the Little House. And I didn't see anybody stand, so who are you? If you've worked at the Little House, stand up. We, that's a wonderful mission to our neighborhood. We want to recognize you. Thank you. So please stand now if you serve with Kathy Irvin. On, as chair, she's chair of the food pantry team. So if you've ever worked at, on the, in the food pantry, um, we'd like you to stand because the needs of our community are great. That's and gonna this, be a lot of you. Yeah, this team meets weekly to manage the food pantry and is certainly making a difference for those who are food insecure in our neighborhood. Thank you guys. Thank you. We'd like you to stand if you're a part of the kitchen team and the funeral team, uh, this, uh, bereavement dinners. This team puts together some amazing meals throughout the year and also provides meals for families who've lost loved ones. We thank you for your dedication and service and especially your act of, of grace and love for families in need. Please stand if you are one of our revenue counters every Monday morning. John Frank, John Hickernell, Dorcas Scott, and Bonnie House meet faithfully to account for your generous donations every week. That's another behind the scenes job that we really appreciate. Thank you guys, let's keep giving them lots of work to do. <laughs> uh, fine, oh, please stand if you're in the Hodge Shy Guild, a group, of, a, a, a group of church women who meet monthly for fellowship and informative programs. This group invites all women of the church to join them on the second Saturday of the month at nine o'clock. Jean Holloway will serve as the church, uh, serve on church council as our representative for the United Women of Faith. That's, that's the new name for uh, United Methodist Women. So thank you for your work and your service. And if you'd like to join that group, you can talk to Judy Cronister or Winnie Sneed, who are co-chairing at this time. And as I look um, up in the balcony, I realized that when I was kind of listing everybody for the worship team, that I forgot the IT team. So let's turn around and give Brent a big wave and a thank you. I think and, Cheryl's back and, there too. And Jason, Jason, Jason is in the back corner. Y'all. And finally, John Hickernell, I know you don't want to stand to be recognized for your work with the Choto Backsec program, but I want you to be recognized because many of you see all those boxes up on the walkway that stack up from harvesters and they disappear. And that's because John is putting together bags of food from harvesters for Shoto students who might not have food on the weekends. So harvesters brings it here and he divides it up and those children are thrilled when they see that bag outside their door every Friday. So we thank John for this important outreach service. So now let's give everybody a round of applause, a hoot and a holler for all that you do. <laughs> Oh my, look at the time. Dear friends, you have been called in, by God and chosen by the people of God for your leadership in the church. This ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts and calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligation and challenge you to offer your best to God to this people, and to our ministry in the world. Live a life in Christ and make him known in your witness and in your work. I invite all of you in these responses because whether or not you serve in an official capacity, again, through the sermon, per the sermon, we're all called of God. Today we install leaders of the congregation for 2023. Do you this day acknowledge yourself a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, say I do. I do. Will you devote yourself to service of God in the world? Will you so live that you enable this church to be a people of love and peace? I will. Will you do all in your power to be responsible to the task for which you have been chosen? I will. And now our incoming lay leader will lead us in our unison prayer. For our unity 
and the unity of your whole church in your mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Tech team, sorry about that. Scroll through a few more. And there's going to be a response that, that says lay leader. And then one more. There we go. There we go. Okay. And let us all unite our voices together and hear us, O Lord. Hear us, O God. With leaders at every level of our common life, villages, towns, states, nations, corporations, and international associations, that there may be a that there may be peace and justice for all of God's people. Hear us, O God. For the earth, that we may be and inspire others to be good servants or of all the gifts of your creation. Hear us, O God. With all who need your hearing and deliverance from physical or mental illness, isolation, deprivation, violence, and any other form of oppression. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us, O oh God, and make us also be agents of your unity, justice, care, and healing. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and rededicate ourselves to God as we sing that old church song, uh, We Are the Church. It reminds us that it's not the building or anything else, it's we are the church, no matter who and where we are. Verses 1 and 2. Did I say that twice? I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people, the dead of many faces. Colors of all ages to from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Yes, we are the church. Now the church is invited to go forth into the world, sharing the love and the peace of God for the transformation of our hearts and the world. Go in Christ. Amen.